Right, so now that we've borne witness to Keir Starmer's race to defend Israel's right to defend itself as it attacked Iran, and then warned Iran to not respond in turn because Iran evidently has no right to defend itself in his view, another reminder that Keir Starmer will clearly go to any length to defend Israel, no matter what they do, it seems. But there's another story which has got astonishingly non-reported in UK mainstream media in relation to the deaths of six charity workers working in Gaza that occurred last week, all of whom worked for British charity Oxfam, though Oxfam has over the years certainly gone international with the aid it provides. Nevertheless, this is a charity whose roots are embedded here in the UK, and yet a week has now passed since this news came out in foreign media and alternative media. However, the UK mainstream media, not one outlet that I've seen, has picked this story up and covered it in any detail. So is this another demonstration of how deeply Keir Starmer's pro-Israel roots of support go? And has something like a D-notice been issued, as some have surmised, that could explain that? Or are the mainstream media fundamentally just as pro-Israel as Keir Starmer is, and just as committed to covering up what is a very awkward news story to defend the UK establishment against pro-Israel as they are. Right, so, is it a cover-up or are the deaths of six aid workers in Gaza, when so many others have already died, simply not newsworthy enough for any of our mainstream media outlets anymore? With the Prime Minister Keir Starmer having stood up yesterday in Samoa and giving one of the most shameless speeches of his tenure thus far, and boy is that saying something! where his ardent support for Israel continues despite their unprovoked most recent attack on Iran. Regardless of how weak it was in the eyes of Iran, certainly their opinion, they are still of course mulling over another retaliation once more now. But Starmer has stood up and said to Iran they shouldn't respond. They were the ones being attacked, but they don't have a right to defend themselves in his view it seems. He's either a complete and utter political pygmy, and his claims to have been a former human rights barrister, frankly a complete sham, or he's so bought and paid for by vested interests and US foreign policy that he's simply not allowed to say anything else, begging the question of who exactly it is running the country these days. And we certainly deserve answers both from politicians and the media alike as to why this story, it's a big story I think, that has gone completely ignored. On the 19th of October, four Oxfam workers were killed in central Khan Yunis, just north of Rafa, so in the southern end of the Gaza Strip. And they were there working with one of Oxfam's partner organisations, which was the Coastal Municipalities Water Utility, or CMWU, which is much easier to say, in order to repair water infrastructure that had been destroyed there by the IDF. Oxfam themselves even issued a statement themselves on this, the basis for any media coverage, really, the starting point for it, you would think, a source straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, which read, Oxfam condemns in the strongest terms the killing in Gaza of four water engineers and workers from the Kuzar municipality who were working with our strategic partner, the Coastal Municipalities Water Utility, CMWU. The four men were killed on their way to conduct repairs to water infrastructure in Kuzar, east of Khan Yunis. Despite prior coordination with Israeli authorities, their clearly marked vehicle was bombed. Oxfam stands in solidarity with the CMWU, their partners, and the families of the victims. Their deaths deepen the catastrophic humanitarian crisis in Gaza, where access to clean water is already severely compromised. Dozens of engineers, civil servants, and humanitarian workers have been killed in Israeli airstrikes throughout this war. They were all working on essential services to keep Gaza's fragile infrastructure running. Despite their movements being coordinated with the Israeli authorities by the CMWU and the Palestinian Water Authority to ensure their safety, they were still targeted. Attacks on civilian infrastructure and those who maintain it are clear violations of international humanitarian law. Those responsible must be held to account. Such attacks are part of the crime of using starvation as a weapon of war. Oxfam demands an independent investigation into this and other attacks on essential workers. We reiterate our calls for a ceasefire, an immediate halt to arms transfers to Israel, and the international community to ensure Israel is held accountable for its continued assault on civilians and those working to deliver life-saving services. It's another example of the media either choosing to be, or being instructed to be, silent on what appears to be a huge story. And that in itself is a massive scandal. A huge travesty being omitted. Because that's a failure of basic journalism, isn't it? 
Journalists are supposed to hold power to account. We keep getting told that you were so used to them actually not doing so. At least the ones that get shoved in our faces every day. Yet nobody is being held to account here at all. There's another example of this seemingly happening too, though this isn't directly involving the media per se, but the Ministry of Defence. But it involves aid workers again. And this is a story that came out back in July. Again, the mainstream media largely ignoring it. But if you're looking for news they won't cover, and it involves the actions of the military especially, then declassified UK should be your first port of call. And their chap, John McAvoy, dropped a story from back then involving that attack on those world food kitchen workers, which you might recall, who again had filed their travel plans through Gaza with Israel, with the authorities, and yet were struck again anyway. Well, as it turns out, the RAF were conducting some of those surveillance flights I mentioned the other day in a video. They've actually been known about for months, these flights by the RAF the UK have been carrying out, yet again, you'll have not heard squat in the mainstream media about it. But due to the fact a surveillance flight was happening, the RAF has apparently got surveillance of that World Food Kitchen attack, which killed three British workers, but the MOD has refused to publish it, refused to release the footage on the grounds of security. Well, whose security? According to Declassified UK, it may involve MI6 or UK Special Forces. Keep that one in mind. Now, that story by Declassified came out in July and related to that World Food Kitchen incident from back in April. But now we're hearing... In the mainstream media, they're allowed to cover this bit, it seems. The surveillance footage may contain evidence of war crimes. Israel committing war crimes. And the UK have got footage of it. Surveillance footage? Well, I never. The UK official line being that these surveillance flights were there looking for the hostages, of course. But where Al Jazeera have revealed the RAF have allegedly been passing targeting data to the IDF as well. Direct involvement in the genocide of Gaza, if true. But in a story that made me think... Now that that's got out, they need to try and save their own backsides, save some face. They may now hand over footage to international investigators who might be building a case of war crimes. Though haven't made clear who might have made such a request, if anyone. The coverage from Sky implies nobody has. So this seemingly then is the MOD saying, well, we have got this evidence here. We're prepared to make a deal and possibly throw Israel under the bus, maybe. But more likely to help instead build a case against Hamas, I would think. At any rate... They seem to have evidence of something, and they previously wouldn't release anything on security grounds. So, make of that what you will. The other two Oxfam workers, health workers as they were, were killed in the ongoing strikes in the north of Gaza that have intensified over the last three weeks, where Israel is basically enacting what amounts to an extermination, particularly focused on the Jabalia refugee camp. Turkish news outlet Anadolu Agency covered this story, an excerpt from their publication on the 20th of October, reads, Oxfam mourns the tragic loss of our partners at Juzor, Dr. Ahmad Al-Najjar and midwife Leila Jenaid, killed by Israeli airstrikes on Jabalia, the humanitarian organisation said in a statement on X late Saturday. It said the two workers were providing life-saving health care in Gaza. Attacking aid workers is a war crime, Oxfam said, renewing its call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The Israeli army has pressed ahead with a massive offensive, now in its 16th day, in northern Gaza amid a suffocating siege of the area. Again, there is no mention of this incident in the UK media that I could lay hands on. The closest I got to any of this being covered was live reporting as it happens, uh, one of those live streams that many news outlets um, have, on the, have running when some key event is going on. And this was from the BBC website from the 19th of October, where they made mention of the four Oxfam workers killed trying to restore water east of Khan Yunis, reported as that news came in, as that was, and saying they had approached Israel for comment. Yet there was never any follow-up to that at all that I could find. Just that snippet, that one snippet in the live coverage as it was happening on the 19th of October, and then nothing, not just from the BBC, but seemingly from any... UK mainstream media, which has prompted people to wonder in relation to this story, which has been discussed largely on social media, if a D-notice was issued to the mainstream media on this story, which killed off any further coverage beyond that. And if that is the case, why would that be? D-notices, or DSMA notices, as they've actually been called since 2015, stand for Defence and Security Media Advisory Notices, and they're issued by the government to the media as an advisory-only notice, they aren't legally binding, 
to not broadcast or publish certain things that may be necessary to national security, that may reflect on that. If that is what has happened, in what way is national security to the UK being affected by charity workers being targeted by the IDF, as it appears to be, by occurrences happening in Israel? What exactly are we up to if this is indeed what is happening? Why does it affect our national security? The fact these people in this country are now becoming so suspicious of UK government motivations and a mainstream media who are too close to them, where it comes to Israel and Gaza especially, that they are asking questions of our media seemingly ignoring so much of it as to whether that is something they are abiding by due to government instruction now. Given Keir Starmer's determination to defend Israel even in the face of them launching another unprovoked attack on another sovereign state and still call it self-defence, and the state they attack having no right to respond in his eyes, no right of self-defence for them, well, it's easy to believe, isn't it? What are we not being told? The war on the UK's role in surveillance being done seemingly to aid and abet Israel in Gaza as per Al Jazeera's expose, because we have to rely on foreign media to do our media's job of holding our government to account. Check out this video recommendation here as your suggested next watch. I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.